Hi guys. On this next video, we're going to join Lynn Mayer for the basics on the Heart Sound Recorder. So this video was actually designed for people that are beginning to use the Heart Sound Recorder, but it's also a great refresher if you're currently using the Heart Sound Recorder. I also encourage you to get your staff to watch the video so they can understand the basics. Let's see what Lynn has to say. The record button here, and again, just to introduce myself, this is Lynn Mayer with the Heart Sound Recorder Basics Training. Uh, this teaching is specifically designed for those who are new HSR owners, but all are welcome, including your staff. So if you want, uh, if you have your staff wanting to learn more about it and you want your staff to be uh, helping you run the heart sound recorder, ultimately uh, they are welcome to be on. It's also open to people who might be interested in purchasing the heart sound recorder as a way of just seeing all that goes on in the running of the, the graphs. Uh, at this time, the schedule is that it's usually going to be held on the third Thursday of the month from 9 to 10, Mountain Standard Time, um, unless there's an exception with some other scheduling conflicts, uh, which happened this month. So the next class is going to be May 17th, Thursday on May 17th. So my goal is to just make sure that you're comfortable with all of the features of the Heart Sound Recorder that you're knowledgeable about properly informing your client about the HSR, how to use the consent form, how to enter a client, important notes to enter, placement of the microphone, how to run a graph, when to record a graph, how to correct yourself if you've made any um, errors, when to save a graph and how to send the zip files or the PDFs to your um, rep or your mentor or to Joseph to read the, the, the graph um, and or if you're sending anything to John that you might need some technical help with. I'm also going to show you websites and articles that are available to you as well as answer any questions about hesitations or places that you're having problems. So it's a multimedia presentation. I'll be moving between my own graph my own heart sound recorder, John Reichardt's website, and John Bennett's website. So don't hesitate to jump in and ask questions pertaining to the topic being spoken about. But if you could save any general questions to the end, I'm not going to be interpreting any graphs, but we'll show you where to find the 10 observational findings as we go along. So let's get started. I just first want to introduce you to the Heart Sound Recorder. This is the website where I'm sure you're all familiar. This is Joseph's website and where you go to purchase the Heart Sound Recorder, heartsoundrecorder.org. So the Heart Sound Recorder is a computer. It, it's, it's labeled as a cardiac stress monitor. It's a low risk general wellness, wellness device. To be really honest, it's much like a Fitbit. Anyone could own one, um, but it's in the interpretation and your understanding of the nutrition as it applies to it as is where your expertise is invaluable in the Heart Sound Recorder. The Heart Sound Recorder is for nutritional guidance only. We're assessing the nutritional status of the body and body tissues as seen through the lens of the rate, rhythm, and tone of the heart. We're not diagnosing, but making observational findings. As Dr. Lee has taught us, and Joseph is teaching us, and Mark Anderson has taught us how to interpret the, the nutritional status of the body through this lens of the rate, rhythm, and tone of the heart. And, and to that end, it's real important that when we're speaking to our clients and our patients that we, that the language that we use pertains only to the nutritional observations. We don't wanna use any clinical diagnostic cardiovascular terms, but just keep it, and we wanna keep it very general to nutritional status of the body. And so in that the heart, is the most electrical organ in the body. And it's uh, the, actually the first organ that very much responds to what we've had to eat and drink and stress. Um, we can use it as a stress monitor to see how foods are affecting us, how our 
deficiencies in our diet is affecting us. It's a wonderful adjunct for any therapy that you're using, whether it be nutritional guidance, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage, emotional work, as well as medical interventions. All progress that you are making or lack thereof can be witnessed through the heart sound recorder. So it's a wonderful adjunct to whatever it is that you're doing to be monitoring your, your patients, your clients, and then showing them the, the progress that they're making. A couple of um, if, computer notes. If you're a, an older HSR owner, um, you wanna be sure and have the latest version. Let me just step out of here a moment and show you how to find that. You'll see right here on your icon, on your computer, see where it says HSR uh, V2. So that's V2.5. I think there's a V2.5A. Uh, John Reichardt is on the phone. He can correct me, but it's, it's, it's the, the same as the 2.5. So that's how you can check. And if you need to uh, update for any technical support, if you need to update, you might get a message from time to time that there is a new version and an update. This is where you want to go, to heartsoundresearch.tech. This is John Reichardt's um, website. He is the our tech, technical, he was a chiropractor um, himself, and he's the one who's been restoring the heart sound recorder, the endocardiograph from Dr. Lee's time, and then found a team of engineers to be able to re-engineer it and get it up to speed in the digital age. So from a technical point, any of the software questions, any of the hardware questions, um, this is the site that you'd want to go to. And you can see there's uh, the password is ENCG2. So I'm going to show you how to get onto this website and what you'll find when you're there. See, I want to open a new window. Whoops, helps if I spell it right. Ha! Heartsoundresearch.tech. And now you'll see the password. There's an option for a password, ENCG2. And when you very first put it in, you have the option for saving it. So as you'll see, mine is saved. So I just click on login. And then here is um, where you can find installing your HSR software. If you've you're new and you're installing it, you can do it by the flash drive that comes with your heart sound recorder, or if you're installing it on a new, you've misplaced that and you're installing it on a new computer, this is where you go for that. Uh, the manuals are here. So uh, there's a variety of places um, to find the manuals. I'll show you on your heart sound recorder how to find it as well. And you'll see in the manuals instructions, then you can, uh, come down and just quickly look for what it is that you're needing some help with. Uh, Bethany Linen Call from the uh, Western uh, Coast in, in Washington has started creating training video libraries. So this is a one, wonderful place to come and be able to go on to uh, a quick tour of the control paddle, little, little vignettes, little videos, um, that have been made so that if you need to repeat some of the things that I've taught you, if you've forgotten some of the steps, you can go here and easily just click on and you'll find um, the, the little vignettes. And Bethany's done a wonderful job of that. Uh, there's also troubleshoots, updates, suggestions, a whole uh, variety of tags that you can look at. Uh, to be of assistance. And then just remember, John, to any of the help that you need with your hardware, your hard drive, uh, you'll wanna speak with John Reichardt. Uh, yeah. 
some troubleshooting. Let's see uh, how to import and export. We'll talk more about that. All sorts of uh, suggestions are here on John's website. Then if you're uh, Joseph Antel is who you want to re check in with. This gen for graph interpretation. So you're all familiar with Joseph and he's been teaching. So this is his new uh, website or email address. And Joseph is the one that you want to reach out to with any questions about the nutrition, about the um, interpretation of the graph, uh, any, any of those questions that you have. So let's first start by talking about readying your clients for running a graph. The Heart Sound Recorder Patient Consent Form, you saw it on um, uh, John Reichardt's site. I'm also going to show you where to find it on John Bennett's site. And it, um, you want to be sure and get a consent form on any of your patients. On their first visit, as you explain about the Heart Sound Recorder, what it does, what it doesn't do, uh, making sure that they understand that it's not a diagnostic tool, that it's a general wellness device, and that they are giving you permission to, to share your graph. We're gonna teach you how to be sure and take people's names off and how to be as HIPAA compliant as you can. Uh, but this is always, you wanna get one of these for every one of your patients and have it in their file for your, just to um, make sure that you've covered that base with them. So this is preparing your uh, patient for a heart sound recorder. You wanna make sure that they're well hydrated. So ask them to drink plenty of water the day before, that morning before they're coming in. Have them uh, be sure to dress appropriately so that they can get comfortably get down to one thinner layer of clothing. So the microphone does fine listening through that one layer. Um, but if they've got uh, sweaters, it's cold, just make sure that they know that they, they're gonna be asked to take off their heavy sweaters and be able to get down to a, uh, you know, that one layer. Asking women if they have sports bras to wear that, uh, that makes it much easier to maneuver. And, and I'll teach you a little bit later how to use the sports bra to actually hold it. Um, under, you know, the microphone in place. I have people remove their neck jewelry. And if women have long hair, I have a hair clip. I like people to just have the hair up and out of the way so that I'm not having to move it around and get it out of the way. You wanna ask them to have finished eating at least an hour and a half prior to the test. And the reason for that is the microphone is picking up motion. And so it will often pick it up the motion of, uh, the, of the digestive system working. Also, as we spoke of earlier, the heart being so sensitive to what somebody's had to eat or drink and emotionally, it'll show that. So have them relaxed, you know, have finished eating, have them come in in a relaxed time frame around their scheduled appointment. Ask them to come 10 minutes early, bring a book, sit and be quiet, and then ask them to not have another appointment scheduled right after it, because if they get nervous about the time, their timing, maybe you're running late, they need to be somewhere else, all of that can you know, distort the picture you're gonna see of what uh, they might have going on in their heart. So um, you ask them to not have caffeine prior to the test, unless you want to see the effects of the caffeine on the heart's rate, rhythm, and tone. Uh, the same goes with medications, To If people are taking a variety of medications, to have that they can bring them along, ask them to not take them that day or in the morning, maybe schedule them in the morning, uh, so that they can bring those medications along and take them right after you're finished. Now, everybody has a little bit different approach to both of these, the caffeine and the medications. I personally, as a practitioner, I like to see people in the midst of what they're normally doing. So if they're a big caffeine drinker, I wanna show them how that's affecting their heart. I wanna show them how the medications are affecting their heart. So everybody's different. Um, and I'll show you an example here. This is uh, uh, an on-the-road traveling experience uh, that Joseph and I had when we were teaching in Utah. Uh, 
after we ran it, we, uh, the practitioner indicated that uh, he drank a lot of Diet uh, Cokes. So I'll show you what this looked like. So this was his first graph. We did it in uh, at 515 at the end of the day of teaching. And you can see just the disarray and the uh, fluttering and the fibrillations and the uh, what was going on with his heart. So in talking to him more about it, he was quite addicted to Diet Cokes. Joseph had on him Cardio Plus, Antronex, Beta Food, had him giving him things that could help move out the toxicity of the Diet Cokes um, and, and had him stay off his Diet Cokes. So here's a before and after. So this again, this top one was 5.15 the evening before, had him stay uh, not drink any more Diet Cokes, had him take the supplements that we had on hand, and this was our running of him uh, at a little before nine the next morning. So you can see uh, the burden that was removed from his heart and how he was uh, starting to have a more clear, crisp uh, rhythm and tone. Now he's got still got a ways to, to go, um, but just to show you the impact of and this is why sometimes I like to see people where they are so that I can show them, then I'll have them come back. And I'd say, I'd like you to come back tomorrow or whenever it's next best convenient. Let's find out what your heart looks at, like without your Diet Coke, without your medications, and then we'll start that. But it can be, impress people very much to see that. Um, Okay, so let's get started. This is the front of your control panel. Uh, so this right here, this is the microphone jack. So that's where you're going to plug in the uh, microphone. This is a connection for the headphone. You can put in headphones. What's really recommended if you're going to use headphones is to get a really good quality, like the Bose headphones um, we, uh, that can capture the lower sounds. You, you do need a good pair of a quality headphones to do this. Um, we have had people plug in their um, jack in the wrong place, and I'll show you what that looks like as I turn on my heart sound recorder uh, to show you what that might look like, just to have you uh, be uh, aware of that. This is the knob here for the volume, what you're going to use to turn the volume of the sound up and down. This red light here, when you connect it to your device, it will, uh, and you turn it on you, when you're putting the microphone on the placements, uh, the, the red light here will beat in accordance with their heartbeat. So you'll be able to tell uh, that you're all connected. Um, you, we'll talk a little bit later too about there's two ways to record. Once you're seeing the graph and you're ready to record, one is, um, to use the record button uh, in your heart sound recorder. But the other thing is that this button, know that you can uh, push this in and um, it will start recording it as well. So everybody's different, what's comfortable to them. You'll see a little bit of a demonstration that uh, a little bit later. So a very important note is that you wanna plug in your heart sound recording device. So your black box, you want to get it all plugged into your computer before you open the HSR program. And the reason is, is because when you open your program, then your, your computer program looks for the device. If it's not there, it, sometimes we can get busy, and I know I get in trouble with this in my office in Telluride. Sometimes I'm busy moving my laptop around, and I've had the program open, and I plug it in, in the wrong order and the computer program gets a little um, confused and it gets stuck and it just needs to be reset. You just need to close the program, plug, every, plug your device in and then reopen the program. So just know we've all done it, but the important thing is um, to step back and make sure that your device is plugged into the computer first. So this is the, uh, information page and so i'm going to step back here and just open up my uh heart sound recorder 
I want to make sure I don't have it open in my toolbar, just so that we can do it in time and real, real person here. So this is the first thing that you're going to want to do is put people's personal information in here. I'm just going to uh, put this as Lynn Test and enter their birth date. Female. Um, some people like to put it in inches, whatever you're used to doing. I can tell you this. If you're sending people's height onto Joseph to read um, and or me to read, we read and are able to interpret things much e more easily in real foot and inches rather than, uh, you know, like five, six versus the number of inches. I'll, just a little bit of feedback on that. Uh, approximate weight. Um, and then you're going to enter in their blood pressure and their heart rate and their oxygenation. And I'm going to step back. So here's the devices. Um, and again, if you need me to send this, you know, slideshow to you, uh, my email address, I can give it to you again, or it might be at the end. I'm happy to send these notes to you if you don't have, or not in a place where you can write these down. But these are some of the pulse oximeters and the blood pressure cuffs that we found are very reliable. The um, wrist uh, heart sound or uh, blood pressure monitors, I find extremely, they're just really nice, makes it really easy. Some people feel more comfortable or more confident with a, the blood pressure cuff that's a normal testing, so you're welcome to use that. Um, and then here's the pulse oximeter, which gives you the oxygenation and the uh, another version of the heart rate. So you'd want to enter the person's information in here. I'm just gonna be perfect today. I don't know what mine is. Let's say my heart rate is 72, just so that I can show you how this looks on the, um, as we uh, send it forward. So now one of the things that's um, in the notes section, even though we've put the person's birthday up here, when we hide the names, when we send these graphs off to Joseph or to anybody else to be interpreted, it's going to take off the person's last name and it's going to take off their date of birth. So what's really helpful is for Joseph to know, for me to know, uh, for your mentor, your rep to know, as, as um, they're looking at this person is just to put... Um, you know, how, how old they are. So you, however you want to type that in, years old, just so, because that's the part that Joseph is going to see. Then what's, uh, just a very brief history um, about, uh, uh, I'm just going to pretend, um, this is not me, but I'm going to pretend uh, that I had a heart attack, say, say I don't, but if they, you could say a heart attack uh, one year ago, uh, on medications, you can put what the meds are. Sometimes people get such a huge list. I just write that they're on medications, uh, no supplements. Or I could put in here um, that they're taking vitamin D and oh, by the way, they're taking 10,000 IUs and they're taking a, a brand store, a Kirkland, um, multivitamin. So I could do something like that. If I'm putting in the standard process uh, products, I could put in cardiotrophin. As a practitioner who's interpreting your graphs, I want to see how, what the total is per day. Because it can be, sometimes I see interpretations or graphs that are sent in, and it says, well, they're on cardiotrophin, but when I ask how many do you have them taking? They're taking one or two a day, and we know, well, we just need to bump that up. That's rather than something's wrong here. Uh, you can just put in cataplex B, they're taking a total of nine, et cetera. So you, you just want to keep it brief, but information that would be important for the practitioner that's um, reading and interpreting your graph as to what would be important for them to know. Um, even when people are on a whole host of standard process products, I keep it limited to what I know is um, important as far as heart health first, so that Joseph can, can see that first. 
Okay, so then we're going to um, go on to uh, uh, putting the placement, uh, putting the microphone placement. So I just want to show you, that's another cuff. So here are, here are the valves of the heart, and here are the placements that we're going to be using. I'm going to show you a live person here in a moment. This is the mitral, the tricuspid, the aortic, and the pulmonic. And here's what it looks like when you're placing it on the person. So the mitral is right here for a male underneath the breast. For a, a, um, you put the strap underneath the left arm and up and over the right shoulder and tighten it. You want to get it uh, very tight. You should just be able to put your finger under there. Um, make sure it's very tight and close to the skin, that there's no folds of the clothing around there. We have an alternate placement for the mitral valve, which is right here above the nipple, coming down from the, the end of the shoulder line right through here. This is a optional place for women who are well endowed, uh, for people who are carrying extra weight and you can't get nicely to this position here. Um, we found that this reads the mitral um, very well too. The tricuspid position is at the top of the sternum. Um, either to, uh, you, I usually find that I'm, because I, the strap's here, I usually have, continue with the strap over the right side. Joseph does too. You want to just play around with your straps and the positions depending upon the body shape, the body size, um, what, how it lays against the skin most comfortably and flat in the position that you want. And you'll find, as Joseph says, we all need to do at least 50 graphs before you get different body shapes, different sizes, different heights, different um, breast sizes to get really comfortable and never ever hesitate to play around to find where am I going to get the best reading. Um, there's no harm in taking your time and, and finding the clearest, crispest reading to move the straps around, whatever you need to do. There's an alternate tricuspid position. We don't have a picture of it here, but for heavy people or well-endowed women, you can take this mitral position, you can take this uh, device right here and, and pull it over and get it on an upper tricuspid reading point. Now, if it was this woman, can you see she's got a lot of pleats? in her blouse there. This would be something where I want to make sure that I'm always, I'm moving people's pockets out of the way, any pleats out of the way, any sparkles or rhinestones, any heavy lettering. I just want to make sure that I'm getting as close to just that one layer and getting that through. But here's what you'll find. You can often, uh, in that situation, move over and get a good mitral reading uh, right here. Now for women, I don't hesitate to use their sports bra or their bra uh, to, to hold the microphone there if it holds it really nice and tight because sometimes you can get a little bit overwhelmed with trying to get it under the bra in the right position and using the straps as well. So sometimes I find that I can just tuck it under her sports bra here. I can tuck it under her sports bra here. But you just want to make sure that you're not holding it, that you, it's being held securely in place by the bra or the sports bra. You always want to use the strap if you're not, you don't have that bra to hold it in place. Um, we've had practitioners want to just like hold the microphone in the positions to get through the reading more quickly. And we found that it just shows too much flutter. Um, then when you're coming up to the aortic position, you want to come. And to be really honest, I come straight down, I, I take my palm, I bring it straight down the neck here. If I take the palm of my hand and put it right here, right from the side of the neck and coming right down here. And again, different bodies have different uh, bone structure in there. You need to find the little sweet 
flat spot where that microphone can lay really nice and flat there. You'll find some women in particular with some really interesting bone structures here and you just have to work it around a little bit. Might have to move it a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. And then the same with the pulmonary position. Now see, this is just a little bit more what I'm talking about, straight down through the neck, right through the center of the um, microphone here. And for the aortic and the pulmonic, when you're coming to those upper spots, you need to put the strap around both shoulders. Now, everybody's different. You get to learn how you're more comfortable. I tend to approach the patient from the backside. So I hold the microphone with, I'm standing behind them. I put the microphone where I want it and I'm pulling the straps around. I might ask them to hold it in place while I'm maneuvering the straps. Um, some practitioners like to stand in front of the patient and, and lean over them and strap it in the back. So find out what's comfortable for you. Um, here again, as we compare these uh, two charts, you can see where those um, positions are. And again, don't has, ever hesitate and to, to move it around and find the clearest crispus. If we have people with very sagging hearts, you'll find sometimes you have to go much lower if their hearts are quite enlarged and sagging. Uh, so the important thing is that you get the cleanest, clearest reading that you can. And this is also in the manual, the microphone placement, giving you a, a, an actual verbal description of it. And it's something that if you're having any trouble with it at all, and I will, oh, whoops. Uh, sorry, I had a, I thought that was lightning. <laughs> um, that was just a, I had a, a big black sheet of paper over my window so that it wasn't, uh, I wasn't getting light on my screen and it just fell off. So that was the noise you heard. Um, okay, so navigating. So now I'm going to step back out and I'm going to come to my heart graph. So now I am just going to, uh, I've hooked up my heart graph. I'm going to put the microphone on myself. So now this is uh, just so that we can play around. I just want to show you this. So we, we have all of this information entered in here. Uh, you're never, we'll talk more about, you don't want to hit save until you've run all four valves. So now th this is me. Now this is me teaching a class and holding the, the valves, but I just want to show you. I was hoping to get kind of a regular rhythm here to be able to show you. So see how it's jumping a little bit high. So I'm just going to turn the volume down a little bit. I want it to take up about two thirds of the screen. I'm trying to find my second sound for you. Now you'll notice I hit record on the bottom. I don't know where my second sound is this morning. That's interesting. Um, I'm just gonna go through some different.
and you saw the right on the right hand side there the recording in progress you'll see that whether you use the record button on the device or whether you click on the red uh, button there i'm just going to quickly go through Well, you get to see what a Kentucky rhythm looks like. Okay, so now I've got four valves. And what's good to do before you hit save, because once you hit save, it's, it's going to, uh, you won't be able to go back and change any of the valve recordings. So what's good to do is to go into each of your valves and look at the full display. And you can go through each of the valves Now here, if this was me, I'd say, you know what, That's, I've got that turned up way too high. I want to go back and re-record that. So I'll show you how to do that. And this is the time and the place when you want to do that. So that, that aortic got turned up way too high. So I'm going to go back and I want to re-record that. So I'm going to click on start and it's going to ask me, are you sure this is what you want to do? because you won't be able to go back and capture this that you saw before. So I'm going to click on yes. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the full display. And I'm going to say, okay, that, that's much more reasonable. I want actually as much as I can all four valves to look the same height wise. So now once I've got the valves, I've looked and I've seen them, they're all, that's fine. I'm, I want to save it. That's when I would click on save. Uh, don't save this, let me change my name first. So I'm gonna put uh, Lynn, um, I don't wanna use my last name because I'm in here, Lynn Hart. Ooh, how about that? Okay, so it, it does have mechanisms for correcting you that uh, trying to double check, is this what you wanna do? So now I wanna click on save and see how it says file saved. Now say a person, you look up here and you go, oh my gosh, I forgot to, enter any of their information up here. You can, or uh, they tell you, oh, I forgot to tell you that I'm um, also taking statins, or I forgot to tell you I'm, I'm also uh, taking this supplement. You can always add anything here, or change anything up in here, and save it again, and it will save any of the changes you've made up here. You just want to know you can't go back and change anything about your valves. So now when it comes to measuring things in the, uh, uh, and, and using your calipers to your advantage, just know that your lower calipers moves it across. Now this is interesting because I couldn't, was not finding my second sound in here. So we'll, I'll show you how to measure the work to rest ratio. Uh, in a different valve, but in the mitral valve only, you'll see up here, in order to measure uh, the heart rate, you go to any first impulse. I could use that first impulse. I could use 
the you know the first valley or the first and it will show you what the heart rate is up here and oftentimes you'll find once you get started i personally seat my clients so that they're not looking at the device i don't want people to be watching it because i find that they often get a little bit more nervous if they're watching it so i just turn their chair slightly and i work with them that way again everybody's got a different approach if you're wanting to measure the work to rest ratio you can also take your pointer and it will move the graph here. So here I have a second sound, or I, yeah. So I'm gonna measure, this is my work interval here. I'm gonna bring this caliper over here. And my work interval is 0.14. And as we've been taught, we want the, the rest interval should be twice that. So I can do one of two things. I can move this across over here. So if in a two to one relationship, this should then be a 0.28, which is right there. So you can see in this particular incident, um, I'm just about, about a two and a half to a one. If I come over here, let's, it might be the same. Two and a half, you can measure any, uh, this is, I'm going to argue that's where my valve is closing. That's a little bit of regurgitation. So 0.19. So this should be a 0.38, which is a little bit closer. You'll often find as you look at the full display, you'll see sometimes people's work to rest ratio is, is a, a one to one, and then it moves into a two to one, and then it goes into a three to one. And all of that, if there's irregularity in that, that's an indicator for the B vitamins. Um, oh, I, let me step back here because I'm looking at my notes. Uh, John also wanted me to remind you that you can use the um, microphone. You can move it around like you would a stethoscope to find the best sound. So if you, you know that's something else that you can do instead of strapping everybody in as you're trying to find the sound, let me move it around as a stethoscope um, to be able to find the sound. And now I'm going to have you hold it here. This is where I found it. Now you can strap it in, uh, strap them on. Uh, so those, that's how you would move the calipers around. And now if you're sending a zip file to Joseph to be read, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go through each of the valves and line up the three beats that represent the best of, you know, the most of what you saw. So now I just, in this particular incident, didn't have a second sound at all. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't kind of match, match uh, it looks consistent. So here's what I'm going to do is that I'm going to line up. I want to be able to show the opening. I'm going to give it just about a quarter of an inch break here to show that this was uh, what the opening to that S1 looked like and the closing and that she's missing second sounds. Now, my rule of thumb is if somebody's missing them only once, if you only saw a second sound missing only once, I don't worry about including that in the three to four uh, representations. If you see it more than once, then I always like to show at least one of those uh, missing second sounds beats in the representation that I'm gonna send to Joseph. We go through each of the valves and what you can also do is look at the full display and say, which of the beats do I wanna you know, pick out here? So I might, if this was me and I was reporting on somebody else, now this is, now wouldn't this be interesting? I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to show Joseph that sometimes there was a regular work to rest ratio and then sometimes the heart took this really long pause. So that's the beats that I'm gonna choose for him. Again, I'm show, giving this quarter inch here uh, opening so that he can see that. I'm gonna to go to the aortic valve, I can scan across. Well, this, this person was missing their second sound uh, more, they missed it a few times here too. So I wanna include that uh, in Joseph in my representation. So I might send this to him. 
there was a second sound sometimes, but then guess what? She miss, was missing it again in the aortic uh, here. And they go to the pulmonic. And again, you can just scroll through. Uh, as we know, that what's important in the pulmonic is the relationship of the second sound to the first. Um, so, and there's a second sound all the way across here. I may want to show Joseph that sometimes, on occasion, there was a second sound that spiked as high or higher. Sometimes it was in a more normal relationship. So that's what I may choose to show Joseph. Um, then you want to hide the names on the PDF. And you want to create the PDF. And it's going to ask, where do you want to save it? That's up to you. You can create files. If you're just going to be sending it off, I usually just send it on the desktop. And what I want to do, because I'm wanting to keep this as HIPAA compliant as I can, that when I'm sending it to Joseph, I want to take out the person's last name. So I'm going to take out the last name there. And then I'm going to save it. And so that's what it's going to look like when you send it to Joseph. It's going to take off their last name. It's going to take off their date of birth, but you're going to be able to see the female, the height, weight, um, heart rate, blood pressure, oxygenation. And I just cannot encourage you enough to be sure and include this information. Um, it's very helpful to the practitioner, the mentor who's looking at your work to interpret it, is to have that information in there. And this is, again, why we, it's good to put the, the age in there or you could put age 64, whatever is easy, and the information, it's in there, it hides the name of the practitioner, but keeps in where they're from. You can uh, click on send here, send a file, and, and, and send it up. I don't have my uh, default set up in this uh, measurement here, so I'll just show you what I have to do, is that I have to, I go find, um, uh, Lynn right here so I will click on this I will send to mail recipient um, and here, here it goes so then I would send it to uh, Joseph or I'm going to resend it to myself and I might put, I like to put who it's from and, and that this is the graph. I might write in here um, any information about this person that would be outside of what uh, would be telling in the notes section if there's any further message you need to send to Joseph or anybody about the notes, about that file. Okay. So now the other thing that you can do, if you go to the full display, and if you want to send a full display of a particular valve, like say for, um, uh, let me think, was it my pulmonic? No. So say this might be one that I'd want to go, Joseph, what the heck is going on with this? There's some regular beats and then her heart just took a total long pause. Just know that you can create a PDF. And again, you'll want to just uh, take the last name out. Close to red tab. Sorry, for some reason that didn't. Oh. Uh, in case this matters. So there, um, it may have tried to just bring up my past one. So that's why I put an extra number on there so that it would just show up on my desktop a little bit differently. But see where you could send off a whole, uh, the whole 15 seconds of any one of your valves if, if, if need be. And now, some practitioners, and I know that I'll ask this of my uh, practitioners here in, 
in uh, Colorado Springs, I like to see their whole file. So if you're exporting a file, what you do is you go up to tools and you export the client. It'll say file saved, export file created. And that shows up in a zip file. Uh, here it is, zip. And then again, you send this to whomever you want to send it to. I'm going to send it to myself again. And you can put whatever notes, and then that sends the whole file. So uh, that if if I, as your mentor, I want to see what all the all the visits have looked like. If I want to be able to peruse it and go through the, all the 15 seconds in all four valves myself, I can do that. So just know that that's where you uh, import and export files is under tool. If you want to rename a client, you can come in here and pick which, which person you want to rename if you've misspelled them. Um, you can delete clients or you can delete sessions. So sometimes we get started on a session and uh, it, it wasn't recording properly and, and we stopped and then we started again. You can go back and you can delete that uh, uh, session per person. Uh, you always want to back up your data because we have had people who have lost their whole data. So you want to back up the data and back it onto a thumb drive or a flash drive or onto your Maxter, some external source so that if anything would ever happen to your computer, you know, up to the cloud, however you save your information so that it can be retrieved. Because unfortunately, we've had some people who have um, uh, lost their information. I'm going to show you how to compare sessions to, so let's do that. So to enable to uh, compare two sessions for people, um, it brings up who do you want to, uh, uh, compare. So I'm going to bring up a woman just because she's kind of famous in our world, Amy B. I'm going to select her. And I'm going to bring up this date. You, when you bring up compare, you can choose any of the two days that you want to look at. You can bring up their first one. You can bring up uh, and compare your first one to your last one or your most recent one to your last one. In this particular woman's case, I want to show you her March. So I highlight that. And then I want to show you her uh, September. So then it shows you that the comparison with the earliest date. So this was her March on the top and then in September. So in March, um, this woman had quite the Kentucky rhythm and quite, uh, you can see where her heart would take these very long pauses. She had a very big split sound and you can scroll across the whole and then you're able to show the patients the difference. You're able to see it. Um, you can scroll across and see where we had restored uh, a, a regular uh, rate rhythm and uh, we're working on the tone. You can also create a PDF to be able to show uh, the two comparisons. If we go here to help, you can bring up a normal sample. So this is what I like to do when I'm uh, going through with my clients. I show them these are the qualities of a healthy rate, rhythm, and tone. And I share with them what I'm going to be looking for. I want the first sound, your S1, should have three spikes close together, an accordion, very tight, should have a clean opening, a clean closing. Your second sound should be one third to one half the height of the first. The, this rest to work relationship should be in a relationship of two to one. And your heart should be resting very quietly in both of these intervals. 
And that's what in an ideal scene it should look like in all four valves. And the difference, if it's different than that, then that has meaning to me as to what's uh, needing support in your body. So now I actually print this out and I have it in a plastic, you know, wrapper, you know, laminated at my office so that people can be looking at it and holding it while I say, now we're going to take a look at what your heart looks like. And uh, they just like uh, very much looking at that, what it should look like and how there's um, looks. Okay, so let me take a look at, anybody have any questions while I'm, um, is it all of that, how to, and exporting. Okay, so we're getting close anyway to the 10 o'clock hour. So let me just show you, um, sorry, I have to move my, I'm going to take you to John Bennett's website. So Dr. John Bennett dot com slash heart sound recorder and John is in Ohio he's a practitioner that a chiropractor who runs I think he runs about 50 graphs a week and so again here it is Dr. John Bennett with two N's and two T's dot com slash heart dash sound dash recorder and this is the page that this will get to you so now john has a series of uh videos these are videos that more are pertaining to you as the practitioner what are the top 10 products how the heart sound recorder works, uh, how it adds value to your current practice. So these would be um, videos for you and your practice and your staff to watch. These are the 10 primary observations. So this is what just Joseph teaches from each week in the webinars, going through an ideal graph uh, what the supplements are that would be recommended, uh, ways to measure with your calipers the work to rest ratio, what a slow heart rate would look like, a fast heart rate, and then again the products are listed here from highest priority to lowest priority uh, as to your considerations from which you can build a protocol. Goes through the flutter and the fibrillation that you'll see, the ideal graph you can measure, and this is where you can take your calipers, those upper calipers, and measure what is the duration of the first sound. It should be between a 0.12 and a 0.14. And this is a great thing to be able to show your clients, and here's yours. Your duration is a 0.32. This is the ideal scene, but you bring up, show them that ideal picture, and then show them this is, is um, uh, the duration when this you know what's the um, second sound the relationship of the second sound to the first when it's too high what that means when you see a split sound what that means this is a disturbance after the closing and this is when the heart valve the heart is sagging a bit and the valves aren't closing properly and where a little bit of blood is seeping back so again, you wouldn't say, oh, this is your murmur. You do want to say there's a lack of integrity in your valve closing. Um, so we're going to strengthen your heart and, and, and get that tightened up for you. Here's the disturbance before the closing. That's when cholesterol is kind of ringing the valve. So we want to open up their, uh, you know, help them with cholesterol processing. Um, 
if there's any asynchronistic people are throwing extra beats there's extra there's an arrhythmia there um that's what we saw with mr diet coke missing second sound what you saw on mine today that's the need for getting calcium and cut uh, f getting calcium into the tissues and then in the aortic and the pulmonic, the high second sound and the meanings of that. So that's what Joseph goes through with you um, on, on the webinars. But then what you can do, we have a practitioner here in Colorado Springs who took the initiative uh, to create a, a heart a tracking sheet. So it's taking those clinical observations, and this became a, it takes a village. Many people added their input till we got it all together. But then what you can do, this is a great place to start while you're getting comfortable. So this is what I wanna look at first. What's my work to rest ratio? If it's fine, you can put okay, leave it blank or smiley face or whatever you wanna do. But if it's fast, then you could note fast, you could circle fast, and then you'll know these are the products uh, in order of importance for me to consider as I'm creating a protocol. So as you work through, um, yes, they had flutter in their diastolic rest period. I'm gonna check off cataplex B. What was the quality of the tone of this first sound? The duration was way too long. And so I'm gonna put um, yes, or the duration long or 0.32, like we saw that example. And here's the products I'm gonna to wanna to use, cardiotrophin and cataplex B. Same in the tricuspid. And then is that second sound too high in the mitral and the tricuspid? And what are the considerations in there? Did I see the split sound? So you can see how you can go through all of the observations and create for yourself and then be able to help yourself create a protocol. There's also uh, this wonderful article that's a great, um, that Joseph wrote comparing the B vitamins on B and G. Uh, where they're necessary, what depletes them, um, etc. So that's just this newsletter. Um, there's your consent form. So you can find it you, there as well as in the information on the heart sound research.tech. Here is a flyer. If you're wanting to have a day where you're going to set up of uh, just running graphs for your patients, um, whether you want to do it free, uh, and then you're you're going to run the graph, whether you're going to spend time that day uh, going through it and giving them a protocol, or whether you're just going to be running it and then adding to their file and tell them that you're going to go through it with them next time they come in. Everybody has a different little bit of timing that they like to use and how they like to run it, but some doctors find that when they're very first starting out with a heart sound recorder, that to have some time where that's all they're going to be focusing on and doing so they're not wearing all their hats um, is, is a nice way to get a lot of people through and try different body shapes and sizes. Um, so that's another way that you can do that. Or you could have a heart sound day. Here's a, a brochure that you can print out. This is a, it's actually folds over. And so this gives some information about the nutrients and all the products uh, that you could use. So you could see where it just folds over. So just know this is where you can find some of this information. It's a, a great article by John Courtney. And then this Cataplex B is a really wonderful one page uh, document or write up to have uh, to pass out to people as they're coming in. Um, so that's what I had to share with you today. If anybody has any questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself and, and come back on. And I just, what I like, like to encourage people to do is just to, you know, have fun with what you're doing. You're doing a great service to these people and to the world and practice, practice, practice. Uh, as I'll reiterate once more, Joseph says, once you've run 50, you will be proficient. So thank you everybody for being on. I'm gonna just 
check my, see if there's anything else I forgot to tell you here. Nope, there we go. Uh, pra oh, practice, practice, practice. We went through all of these things. Um, and then we went through the tools, John sites, tracking sheets. So I think we went through all of that. So thank you everybody for being on and uh, all the best and have fun with it. And just, you're doing great work. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that presentation. And remember, keep it in your resource bank to go back and visit from time to time to stay up on the basis of the Heart Sound Report. Until next time, keep scanning people and keep changing lives.